Well, thank you. Uh, and thanks for the opportunity to speak at this uh, important uh, convention. Um, I'm actually from the United States, but I'm going to be speaking about uh, some work I'm doing related to Germany. And in this work, we'll be going from uh, most of the presentations focusing on individuals and treatment. Here we're going to look at uh, the population as a whole and try to get some idea of how vaping might affect uh, the population, in particular, its role with smoking. Uh, and I'm going to use a model that I've developed a while back called the smoking and vaping model, or save them, as, as I call it. And it specifically looks at the health impacts of smokers switching from cigarettes to nicotine vaping products and VPs. I, I don't like the term e-cigarettes. Electronic can apply to lots of things. It's unclear. The, the key is that there's vaping and there's nicotine, which is important in switching from uh, cigarettes. Uh, and what we've done is we've developed this program in an Excel uh, format. Uh, we have an extensive user guide. And uh, the idea is that other countries can use it. Um, and uh, it's relatively simple. You pick a period over which you'd like to examine the projection period and it, and, and you apply country specific data and it shows you how different cohorts progress. So our basic goal is a user friendly model that can be used by countries, states, uh, or other uh, areas to show the public health impact of vaping use and uh, examine the impact of relevant parameters. Uh, we published a paper very recently on the US model in which we validated the model and provided extensive results showing uh, positive impacts of uh, vaping. Uh, and, um, and, and that was in the journal Population Metrics. Uh, we also have several papers with another model of mine, not to be confused, called the SimSmoke model, where we showed major effects of vaping for the US, England, and Canada. So now to the uh, SAVA model itself. The way it's structured is we first start off with a no and uh, vaping scenario. That projects what would happen in the absence of e-cigarettes? In a sense, that's a counterfactual in a country that has e-cigarettes. And we do that by uh, applying data, uh, projecting trends from before e-cigarettes or vaping was introduced. Then on top of that, we have what we call the NVP scenario that incorporates explicitly vaping and allows the uh, trajectories in smoking and vaping that result from the use of uh, uh, NVPs. Uh, based on that, we look at the difference between those two, and that gives us public health impacts in terms of smoking and vaping prevalence, smoking attributable deaths, and life years lost. So it speaks directly to health issues. So starting off, with the no NVP scenario, and this is for Germany, where the model began in 2012. We used German, uh, we used Germany's population. We uh, the, the U.S. Uh, mortality rates uh, are distinguished by smoker, by current, former, and never smoker. But we translate those into German rates using Germany death rates. And similarly, we translate life years lost uh, into comparable German uh, level uh, outcomes. Now, the most important part in this is, you know, we have underlying this very complex smoking model, a cohort model, and we translate that into uh, the German experience using uh, preferably one of the uh, larger, uh, more complete data sets. And we use a data set called the 2012 GIDA. 
you know, matched up with our initial year uh, and broken down by age and gender. Uh, and we also use that to, uh, tra uh, to transform the uh, initiation and cessation rates, which are used for progression. So that's the part of the model that projects uh, the impact of smoking in the absence of e-cigarettes. Now we move to the part that incorporates cigarettes and we incorporate the transitions, the usual transitions to smoking, but also uh, never users can transition into e-cigarettes. They can also quit e-cigarettes as they can quit uh, former smoking. But an important part of that is that current smokers can often switch to e-cigarettes, which they may use instead of e-cigarettes, uh, or they can, uh, uh, and, and we consider them if they're under age 35 as just e-cigarette users because much of the smoking risks uh, 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 decline rapidly over time. But those over 35 do carry the smoking risk but now have the risk of former smokers. And uh, we allow for the former smokers to, uh, that are using uh, e-cigarettes to also quit e-cigarettes. So uh, there's, there's uh, I guess, six type of parameters. First is the risk itself. And we look at the risk relative to the excess risk of cigarettes. We assign a value of 5%. We usually consider higher risk because this is a very controversial area uh, among people who talk about e-cigarettes. The other risk we use is that uh, uh, vaping is 40% the risk of smoking, much higher than I think is, is the case, but just to show how that uh, impacts the results. We have an uh, NVP switching rate, that is the switching from smokers to exclusive, not dual, exclusive cigarette use. Uh, we have uh, multipliers that transform the uh, smoking rates in the NVP case into vaping rates. Uh, and, and usually vaping is some percentage of that. And we use the smoking rates in the no NVP scenario because that gives it some age and cohort structure. Uh, we also allow for smoking initiation. Uh, generally, what we have is a multiplier that indicates less smoking in, uh, initiation. And that's clearly the experience in the United States where smoking rates among youth and young adults have dropped by somewhere between uh, 60 and 90 percent in the last five years, which is pretty dramatic. Uh, we allow for vaping cessation, uh, and we also allow for smoking cessation. Now, um, how those are impacted by vaping. So let's get to the results. Here are the results for males. You know, and first again, we have the no vaping scenario, which for Germany, what we show, and these are preliminary results, let me say at the outset. We show that the smoking rate declines very slowly over time in the absence of these cigarettes. Uh, and, and that is, by the way, the experience in Germany, at least up until um, vaping came onto the scene. Uh, but when we go to the uh, vaping scenario, we see uh, greater declines. Not seen so much at first, but which grow over time. And to see the difference, you look here at the uh, relative change in, uh, in, in smoker prevalence, and you see that even by 2017, starting in 2012, there's a 6% reduction, but it increases to up, up to 20%. Um, and uh, and, and uh, based on that, we show the number of deaths averted, smoking and vaping attributable deaths. Those are 197, almost 200,000. And the life years saved, about 3.5 million. This is just for males. Uh, similarly, we, uh, we have the results for females. I won't go through those, but you see basically the same thing. 
you know, um, some really uh, quite important reductions in smoking rates and some additional uh, deaths averted and life years lost also averted. Um, now, uh, what we do is we validate the model. You know, other models that have been out there, people run them and say, these are what we think are the estimates. We actually compare the models to the data. We did this to the United States and it fit quite well. We're doing that, this now with Germany. Uh, we're still trying to find an appropriate data set. We're using Eurobarometer, but the sample size on that small. We're also collecting data from the micro census and um, uh, the GIDA and its updates. Uh, but this gives you some idea. You know, we, we seem to be fitting with the data fairly well. Um, but, you know, again, one thing I really want to show that's important is before e-cigarettes, you know, like our model shows in the no uh, vaping case, the reductions in smoking were very slow. They sped up a little after 2005 because there were some tobacco control laws, but then they speeded up again after 2013, around the time that e-cigarettes became more prominent. Now, I want to talk about something, and this is why I called the model preliminary. We're trying to come up with a better understanding of e-cigarettes in Germany. And our model here does not predict so well. It, it implies an increase in vaping over time. However, what we see in the data, and this is using DEBRA, but we've also looked at other data sources which indicate declines in vaping. And I would also point out that the rates of use in Germany are substantially lower than in the US. In other words, in the US, we've seen rates among 18 to 24 year olds of around 12%. Uh, so it's much, much lower. And we're talking about regular vaping. Uh, that's another problem. The data doesn't really distinguish regular from, you know, people that vape once a month, you know, get together with their friends once a month. That's not what's relevant. That's not have what has the ultimate impact on health. It's the regular vaping. It's also the regular vaping that leads uh, smokers to switch away from vaping. So, you know, again, we're, we're looking more at the data and that's going to be very important in our future studies. Um, and, and we want to understand the laws regard to vaping. We think that some of both the lower use of e-cigarettes and the declining use in e-cigarettes comes from the stricter policies which Germany has implemented, you know, both at a local and at a national level, particularly in the last two years, where, as I understand it, a major tax is um, expected to go into effect in, in Germany in the very near future, if it hasn't already gone into effect. So again, you know, we're trying to understand these things. We're looking at the many different data sets available for Germany. The results I present here are preliminary. Um, and as we get better information and uh, work with people in Germany, uh, we will adjust the model so that it more accurately reflects the German experience. Uh, one thing we always do with our analysis is sensitivity. Uh, analyses, looking at the impact of different parameters, because we know that they're subject to uncertainty, but that also tells us the most important parameters. And in past work, we find that switching and smoking cessation rates are particularly important. So it's important. The earlier work that talks about vaping and its effectiveness, it's important to make the uh, most effective vaping um, products available if you want to see switching to smoking. And, and, and again, you know, you could see that in the model and the model can also be used to show the impact of different policies. One final point is, you know, I've talked 
uh, I've mentioned a couple of times about the data. Uh, one of the things that we found already from the Germany model is Germany needs better data on data. They need consistent data. They need to relate it to regular data, regular smoking, look closely at these relationships. And this is going to be important in the future. Uh, let me just conclude by saying that um, not only do I encourage your comments on the German model, but you know we work with uh, other countries to develop models, and I'd be glad to talk with you about that. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Levy, for uh, um, contributing to this uh, very challenging uh, field of research. Uh, these models are uh, really interesting, but they are also um, uh, a little bit um, uh, uh, complicated for people that I'm not familiar with. Uh, I would like to set a more clinical question. According to your data and the models that you study, uh, would uh, vaping be an alternative to cigarette that helps to uh, smoking cessation? Yeah, and, and you know, um, in developing the parameters used in the model, we, we look at um, the experience and we're going to look more at the uh, German experience and some of the data and develop in refining the model. But yeah, clearly the data indicates that. And you see that in two ways. You see that in clinical studies, but you also see that in population studies. And as I indicated, the population study is that people that regularly use vapes have much higher cessation rates. And they have, and some of them continue vaping, some of them vape and then stop vaping. So to the extent that you see that, that is how the public health benefits of vaping accrue. And so our model tries to really distinguish how much of that, if that occurs and how much it occurs. Uh, that's the idea of the model. And, you know, just uh, to go back to your earlier comment, yeah, I, models are, are, are tough. And even this one, I got to admit, is, is not simple to work with. We have a manual and everything, but we've tried to simplify it and, uh, to the point where it becomes more useful and it can be developed by other countries. Because we do think that these kinds of analyses are important if we're really going to get a good handle on policies and the impacts of e-cigarette use. 